Hey, welcome to First Online. It's me, Dr. Woods. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you. Yes, I suffered a little setback, so I'm sitting here on the chair with my little boot on my leg, but it doesn't matter. God is still good, and I'm glad you're here to have a good time in our virtual worship experience today. So I'm going to get out of the way, have some good music lined up for you, and a wonderful message. So stick around, and welcome to First Online. <music>
All right, let us just get a quick word of prayer. I'm going to ask you to join me as we share in the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, welcome back. If you'll grab a Bible and turn with me to James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, I want to talk to you about a thought today, and that thought is, I'm glad I broke my ankle. I know that sounds crazy, but stick around. It's going to make sense. In James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 in the NIV, you should find these words. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And if it's the King James, it probably says patience. Uh, and there are a lot of words used right there. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. You see, one of the wonderful things about the Bible is the Bible is not a static book. It's a dynamic book. And what I mean by that is when you read the Bible, you always read the Bible through the lens of your past experiences. This is why when you read a story at the age of 20, and then you read the same story at the age of 40, have you ever noticed that you see different things in the story? Uh, maybe you were childless at 20, but by the time you were 40 and had children, the story of Mary and Joseph looked different to you now. The Bible is dynamic because we always look through the lens of our past experience. Well, I had an experience and it really made me see James chapter one, verses two and three in a whole different way. You see, December 31st, yes, the last day of 2020. Now we all know 2020 was a year. Let's just say a year we'll never forget. So I thought I had escaped 2020 and it got me on the last day. I was walking out to my driveway and slipped and fell on ice. And when I looked down, let's just say my foot was pointing in a direction that your foot shouldn't point. I had broken my ankle completely. My foot was all off like this and I was sitting on the concrete. Now, to my astonishment, I was not in pain. My son was with me. He saw it. And of course, he was like, oh my gosh. I said, call 911. He ran and got my wife. And it was like an adventure from there. They put me in an ambulance and these three EMTs, I call them the three stooges. They couldn't lay an IV in my arm. They tried three times. I finally said, can you guys just get me to the hospital? We get to the hospital. They get me out there. They get to the front door, the, the emergency door, and the keypad is frozen, stuck. So now we're in the cold. They're trying to knock on the door to get a nurse to open. And I'm, I'm just laughing at the whole thing. As a matter of fact, I took pictures the whole time with my phone uh, because, again, to my astonishment, I didn't feel any pain. Uh, I was just kind of going through the procedures. Well, long story short, they get you in there. They sedate you. They reset it all with a soft reset. They wrapped it all up. And then one week later, I had to come back to have this surgery. And during the surgery, I had nine pins and a titanium plate placed in my leg and ankle in order for all of this to heal. So out of nowhere, completely unexpected, just walking to my car, it was like life halted. I couldn't move, I couldn't go anywhere, I couldn't drive. And what I didn't know until later was that now God had all of my attention. And this is what he kept saying in my spirit. This is for a reason. Now, of course, in the moment, I couldn't see that. But as time went on, I kept hearing again and again, this is for a reason. And so as I lay there in my bed, wrapped up, leg up. Hours became days. Days became weeks and weeks became two months. And I began to see the reason. And it was closely akin to that scripture in James chapter one that says, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. What do you mean consider it pure joy? What is, James has lost his mind. How are trials and tribulations pure joy? But then he says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces something. He says that it produces perseverance. King James says it produces patience. And I don't think the Greek word there totally uh, encapsulates what God was doing. I think maybe the better word is because what you're going to go through is going to make you better. Maybe that's stronger, maybe that's wiser, but I'm gonna use the generic phrase, the generic word, it's going to make you better. So instead of being upset about it, I began to look at myself in a way that my very busy schedule never allowed. And I'm gonna say that again because somebody listening to me right now is a super busy person like me. And I want you to hear this. I was able to reflect on myself, on God, and so many things in a way that my busy schedule had never allowed. And it wasn't long before I realized that this experience was already changing who I am. And so I want to share a little bit about my experience, but if you're going through something, I want you to know that my reasons and the things that I learned and the things that I uh, gleaned from this experience may not be the same as yours. So you may have similarities or you may have the same reason, I don't know. But just know that if you're going through something, sometimes God takes us through things for a reason. And I believe that if you're quiet enough, the Spirit of God will show you as you go through it. Remember, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So the first step toward seeing my tragedy through healthy eyes was gratitude. Yes, 
<laughs> gratitude. What do you mean gratitude? Are you thankful you broke your ankle? Well, it was a little painful after I got on the crutches and started healing and had to take the shots and the medicine, blah, blah, blah. But this is where my gratitude came from. It's a simple phrase that you can say as well. It could have been worse. You see, I could have busted my head and got a concussion. I could have fell by myself and went into hyperthermia because it was only like five degrees outside and I was outside on the driveway. Uh, I, I could think of a number of things. I could have broke my knee and my ankle or God forbid my hip or anything. It could have been worse. And so I had to get this sense of gratitude and start telling myself, you know what? Thank you, God, that it wasn't worse. C can I pause here and say, have you ever thanked God for what you didn't get? <laughs> have you ever thanked God for what didn't happen to you? Have you ever thanked God that it wasn't worse, that it didn't take the complete wrong turn that it could have? That's a whole different spirit of gratitude. I had to move to a place that said, God, you know, my ankle's broke and yeah, it kind of sucks, but thank you, God, that this was not worse than what it was. And when I got to that place of gratitude, that's when God began to speak. And this is the first thing that God said to me. Virgil, you're not in control the way you think you are. Now, I know we all like to live in the illusion of controlling our lives, controlling our circumstances. But out of nowhere, I mean literally in the twinkling of an eye, like the songwriter says, time is filled with swift transition. Out of nowhere, I was walking to my car to get something out the trunk. And in the next 30 minutes, I was in the back of an ambulance on the way to the hospital. And for the next two months, wouldn't be walking. And so I realized just how much God is in control around us. And that sometimes we convince ourselves that we're running the show. But God kind of reminded me, no, you're not running the show the way you think you are. The second thing that I discovered was that I was now in a place where I was depending on other people. You see, I've always prided myself on my individualism. I mean, I've been married 26 years and I still crack jokes with my wife and, you know, we always crack jokes and I tell her, well, you know, I know how to cook if you don't cook. I know how to wash clothes. You know, my mama raised me A, B, and C. And, you know, I've always prided myself on this independence. But let me tell you, if you ever find yourself in a place of dependency, it's very humbling. I had never needed anybody in the way that I did. I, 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 I couldn't get up to go. Uh, I couldn't even get to the restroom without help. I, I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't get a meal. I, I was just stuck in the bed. And I was in this place where I was totally dependent on the people around me. And in that place of dependency, it made me think about other people who are in dependent situations. Think about people who depend on our food pantry just in order to have food in their home. Think about the physically disabled who have to rely on their family and friends for everyday chores. And when you're in a place that you depend on others, I think in this way, it makes you not look down on other people who are in their place of dependency. And instead you look with compassion because you know what that feels like. Because let's be honest, no one asks to be dependent on other people. No one chooses to be dependent on other people, but sometimes life just kind of throws you these curves and these circumstances that lend themselves to creating that situation. And so I found humility in being dependent on the people around me. And then God said to me, I wanted you to slow down. Now, if you know me, you know I live in fifth gear I hustle hard, I work hard, I play hard, I keep it moving because time is short in my mind and we got stuff to do and I got a family to provide for and I'm no rich person by any stretch so I need to be out here getting it while I can because there's gonna be, you know, the Bible says work while it's still day. Well, I still got some daytime on my calendar so I'm out here grinding and hustling. But let me tell you something, when you are stuck in the bed or even when you're on crutches, you can't move fast. And, and if you know me, you know, I even walk fast. Like they used to tease me in high school because I walked so fast in the hallways. Like I even walk fast. And guess what? When you're stuck like this, you can't move fast. You have to walk patiently. 
And I almost had to retrain my mind because I almost fell down a couple times on the crutches because I got to move in like I normally move. And I had to retrain my brain to look at the floor and move slowly and intentionally. But at the same time that I slowed my life down, I began to do other things that I hadn't found as much time for. I began to FaceTime my grandbabies. I began texting friends that I hadn't talked to in a long time. I began watching like all these movies and TV shows with my wife because I was stuck in the bed and I started finding a joy in living a life in the slow lane that I honestly hadn't experienced because I had never slowed down enough to find it. You see, you can't smell flowers when you run through the garden. You can't enjoy wine when you just gulp the whole cup down. Some things you have to slow down to appreciate. And God slowed me down to show me what a wonderful feeling a slow life can be. I'm honestly closer to my family because of this. And not like we weren't close already, but close in a different way. I've spent my whole life as a father making sure that my family was provided for and safe and okay. But for the first time, I watched them rally around to make sure that I was okay and that I was safe and provided for. My daughter, we talk maybe a couple times a week, since this, she has texted me every single day. My son, yeah, you know, we have our chit chats back and forth, but every day he's asked me either by text message or from work, dad, do you need anything today? Do you need me to bring you home anything today? Do I need to stop and pick up your medicine from Walgreens? And my wife, oh my gosh, I cannot begin to brag on how amazing she has been at just meeting my every need through this. And it gave me a greater sense of appreciation for my family and a sense of pride in the family that God had blessed me with. But to get all this, God had to slow me down. Now, these are just a few of my personal lessons and reasons and things that I promise are gonna forever change me and change how I see others change how I interact with others, change how I move. And your lessons might be different, but what I need you to hear today is that what you're going through is going to make you a different person. And it's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you wiser. It, it's gonna make you things that sometimes the only way we get them is by going through something. And yes, sometimes I laugh and I say, God, couldn't you have found a less painful way to teach me this? But what God is showing me is greater than my ankle or my leg. I began therapy this week. It's been tough. I, I mean, I can barely take steps. And for the first time in 2021, just two days ago, I actually put a shoe on my left foot. Isn't that crazy? And as I looked at my x-rays and how severe this was, I began to think about God as a healer. But God told me one more thing. He said, I don't have to heal you. You were designed to heal already. Given time, your body will heal. God said, instead, I'm the screws and the plates. And I said, the screws and the plates? What do you mean you're the screws and the plates? And I had to think about that. You see, the screws and the plates don't heal my ankle. My ankle and my body is designed to heal itself. But instead, the screws and the plates Hold me together until the healing comes. God said, while you're going through, I'm the one who holds you together till you get to the other side. And now I know God in a way that I never knew him before. God said, I'm the brace that gives you support when you are weak. So I don't know who I'm talking to, but God is gonna be your screws and plate. And while life might seem broken right now, God is saying, I'm going to hold you together till we get to the other side. Come here, Elijah, and testify. I was sitting under a juniper tree thinking it was time to die, and God sent ravens to provide for me, my screws and my plate. Noah, I thought I was going to drown, and God sent a whale to swallow me up, my screws and my plate. Daniel, I thought I was going to get eaten by a lion, and God muzzled the mouth of the lion, my screws and my plate. 
So now, 50 years later, I understand what James was saying in chapter one, verses two and three. He said, rejoice. Why? Because I'm about to see God move in my life in a way I've never seen him move before. And in the end, it's going to make me stronger. While Abraham said, God is my rock and my shield. I guess Virgil would say, God is my screws and my plate holding me together when I wasn't strong enough to do it myself until my healing can take place. Does a broken ankle suck? <laughs> yes, a broken ankle sucks. It really does. But guess what? I'm still glad God broke my ankle because some stuff I just wouldn't get without going through this experience. So thank you, God. But not only thank you, God, for the experience, Thank you, God, for showing me the family that I have. Thank you, God, for showing me what kind of church I have. The, the cards, the texts, the, every expression of love from my church has been amazing. Thank you, God, for all my friends, Facebook friends, life friends, everybody who's been encouraging. I would have seen none of this without this experience. So whatever you're going through, God's going to hold you. God's going to keep you. But also ask yourself, what is God showing me through this experience? What is God teaching me? What is God exposing to me about God's self that when I come out of this, I'll see him in a whole different light? That's the amazing journey of life. Not that we get delivered from everything that comes our way, but that even through the things that we're not delivered from, we learn something about our God. In scarcity, we learn he's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. In, in brokenness, we learn what a friend we have in Jesus. In sickness, we learn by his stripes we are healed. And the list goes on and on. And that's how we get to know our God. So thank you, God. Thank you, family. Thank you, friends. And thank you, church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you right now for all the experiences that, yes, I probably wouldn't have chosen for myself but you chose for me in your ultimate wisdom because those were the experiences that made me who I am today, that made me a more compassionate person, a more loving person, and a more caring person. And I pray, God, that whoever's under the sound of my voice going through right now, that you will show them the reasons and the things that they can get out of whatever it is they're going through. Thank you for people who love us enough to care. Now let us be that caring person as we love on one another. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I know the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, he will.
All right, just want to share a few quick announcements. Uh, number one, we're starting our Bible study the first Wednesday of March. Uh, I'm going to ask you to call the church. I'm going to be in touch with Renee. I did text message everyone a link to the book if you want to order it on Cokesbury, but I found out that apparently it's a little expensive on the shipping side. So uh, hopefully by the time we get to this week, Tuesday, when Renee comes in, we'll have some type of game plan where we can order them together. Uh, time is right on our tail. So uh, try to have a plan by Tuesday or Wednesday uh, so that we can get these books ordered. Uh, I guess, yeah, Wednesday will be Bible study. Uh, but come in there anyway. We're going to have a lesson regardless. We'll work the books out as we go. Uh, but we're going to try to work it out and see if we can sidestep some of that shipping. Uh, just want to remind you, our food pantry is in full effect on Thursday mornings, I believe at 930. So if you know someone uh, that could use a few extra... Uh, uh, pieces of food or some groceries in their home, please send them to the church. And I want to continue to pray for our volunteers that make up the food pantry. They have been doing an amazing job, an amazing job doing God's work in God's vineyard. And we pray God's continued healing and protection uh, over them as they continue to carry out God's work. Uh, other than that, we really don't have any word on getting back to service. I want to encourage all of you to get the vaccine. If you have the, if you're, a, uh, if you qualify uh, based on age, pre-existing condition, I know it depends on what state you're in. Check online for your qualifications. The moment you are qualified, uh, please be diligent in making an appointment. They're going fast, so you have to be diligent. But I want to encourage all of you to get vaccinated as soon as possible. We need to get on the other side of this pandemic. We need to protect ourselves. Continue to wear a mask. Continue to distance yourself. And even if you have the vaccine, continue to wear a mask, distance yourself, and keep your hands sanitized and clean. That's it. Uh, I feel good to be back. I miss you guys. I still want to get in the sanctuary. I hope you enjoyed some of those throwback sermons that we were throwing out. I actually did. It kind of made me miss preaching a little bit more, uh, but we'll be back there soon enough. I'm, I'm just excited that we're going to get there. Shout out to the music department, Shantram, Tina, Jabba, and the whole praise team. They've been holding it down from day one. Lena, Cece, uh, 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 Noah, uh, Jackie, uh, Cordell, uh, I know I'm going to miss somebody and I'm going to regret doing that. Uh, but whoever's been singing, oh my gosh, don't beat me. Thank you all for doing such an amazing job. You have been holding us down. Uh, but that's it. Keep our church in prayer, stay safe. And, uh, remember God loves you. And so do I take care.